It is finally time to install the cabinets. I've been waiting for this day for a very long time, so let's jump into it. I've been storing all the cabinets in my bedroom in the meantime, and it's very nice to know that I can finally get these out of here. Let's start getting them into position. I decided to start in this back left corner, and of course the very first cabinet has an outlet directly behind it, so I went ahead and drilled a hole in the cabinet so I could pop it through. After drilling out all the corners, I connected them with my oscillating tool to make the hole. I could then put the cabinet back into position and then thread the outlet through the hole and reinstall it. I did end up changing that outlet to black though, but I'll use the old one for now. Once that was complete, I could move all the other ones into position, and as you can see here, I also have a mini fridge on this wall too. Wow, I am just so happy right now. It's been such a long time coming and it's so cool to see these finally in place. And they don't even have shelves or doors on and I already think it looks so good. Uh, I think I might raise this up a little bit so it's at the same height as the cabinets. So I can just put some blocks underneath, it won't be too hard. And uh, yeah, we can start to level these out. They're already pretty level as it is, but I'm gonna level them and then I'll screw them into place so they aren't going anywhere. Let's get to it. Now that we have all the cabinets in position, the next step is to screw them into place, but first we need to make sure that they're all level. In order to level the cabinets, you can use shims to raise or lower them. So I'll check the level here first to make sure these two cabinets are in line and they're basically perfectly level. Then if I move it over here, you want to make sure that this span across here is level so that way when you put the countertop on, there's not any dips or anything. And here it's also level, so I might need to make some very micro adjustments, but not much to be honest. For the shims, I'll be using these composite ones. They don't compress as much as wood, so they're nice and sturdy, and also they're super easy to cut with an oscillating tool. I was able to get away with only having to use one shim just on this far left cabinet. Now that we have the cabinets level in this direction by putting the shims underneath, we now need to check to make sure that they're level in this direction as well. We're in luck, these cabinets are already level in this direction, but if you needed to make any adjustments, you can still use the bottom of the cabinet to add shims here or there. One other thing to take note of is to make sure that there's not a gap here in the back, and if there is, you're also going to need to shim that, because this is where you're gonna be screwing the cabinet into the wall. By adding shims in the back here between the cabinet and the wall, you'll make sure that as you screw your screws in, you're not bowing the wood as you tighten them down. And as I screw these in, I'm gonna make sure that I'm using trim head screws anywhere that I think is quite visible. Otherwise, I'll use these cabinet screws that basically have a big head so it can pull a lot of force. I also went ahead and screwed the cabinets to one another. For this, I used a clamp to make sure they stayed in the same location, and I made sure to use a trim head screw and screwed it actually directly behind where the hinge will go so you'll never see the hole. The cabinet on the left is now fully secure, so I repeated the same steps to the cabinet on the right. Now that the two cabinets on the left are fully installed, we can move on to this mini fridge. It's 19 inches wide, and I want to leave a quarter inch gap on either side, so the distance from this cabinet the edge of this cabinet will be 19 and a half inches. As I mentioned before, I wanna raise it up a bit, so I cut some blocks out of a two x four and I'll place these under each leg to raise it up. One other thing to consider is how I'm gonna plug it in. There is an outlet on my left over here, but that's gonna be outside the bar and I don't want just a random cord being plugged into it. So I'm gonna feed it back through these two cabinets and plug it into the outlet in the cabinet all the way on the left. And for that, I'm just gonna use a Forstner bit on my drill to drill through the cabinets. The fridge is now in and working. I got it plugged in. You can see the cord here and I'll just cover that up with the shelf that goes in this cabinet and you'll never see it. All right, so the last cabinet is in on this wall. The next step is to move on to the cabinets over here, but that's gonna be blocking the view. So while I'm still able to show you, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the shelves and the doors on all the cabinets. I do still need to put a coat of polyurethane on all the shelves, but let's see what they look like anyway. I didn't know how this would turn out with the black interior and the wooden shelves, but I really like it. I think this would be a cool design for some open shelving as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and install the doors. I'm gonna start by installing all of the hinges. Now you should use a screwdriver when you do this, but if you have a very steady hand, you can use an impact driver if you wanna risk it. Also, I made sure to label all these when I first assembled all the cabinets, and that way I know where each of them go. Before painting the doors, I made sure to label all of them and tape it off, that way I know I'll install them in the correct cabinet.
And now let's finally fix that carpet. I called out some carpet guys to do this as I didn't want to do it myself. I don't have the correct tools or anything, but I made sure to tape off this cabinet and put a towel over it so it wouldn't get damaged. And now here's the after. I'm really proud of how this turned out. And here's that corner that I couldn't see from last week. Uh, luckily it turned out really, really nice and I'm really happy with the finished look. The black Schluter strip really gives it a nice touch. Now let's move on to the other side of the cabinets. And the first thing we need to address is the plumbing. I decided to replace the drain tube. I first cut it with my oscillating tool and I couldn't figure out how this other plug was stuck in there, but it looks like a bunch of like wood fibers or something. I'm not exactly sure of the building standards back in the 70s and 80s, but anyway, I pulled all that out and decided to use some new PVC and connected all of my pipes. This is going from a two inch to one and a half inch pipe. And just to make sure that it was nicely sealed, I added some silicone to the base, then stuck the tube in and then added more silicone on top of that just to make sure that it's watertight. Now that we have our new plumbing in place, we can go ahead and install our sink cabinet. I went ahead and marked out with some tape and a pencil where I need to cut my hole. So I'm gonna bring this cabinet outside, go ahead and cut that, bring it back in, and then we can install it. Similar to how I cut the hole earlier for the outlet in the first cabinet, I started by drilling out all the corners of the hole and then connected them with my oscillating tool. All right, let's see if it fits. It's gonna be a little tricky. All right, I made a very simple mistake, but I forgot to account for the thickness of the board, three quarters of an inch when cutting the hole, so it's a little bit off, but I have a solution. I'm just gonna move this one over and then slide that one in. There we go, and then we can slide it over from here. Sweet, there we go. So it's a little bit tricky to explain, but basically there were some random holes here in the wall. I pulled off the covers and found this electrical wire here, and I gave it a little bit of a tug and realized that it's connected over here. And we actually don't need an outlet over here anymore, so I just switched off the breaker. So now I'm going to take off the wire here and thread it back through here, and then I can have an outlet inside the cabinet and also use it to also go into the pony wall and put some outlets on the other side of that. good. Now that we have all four cabinets in place, we can start to screw them down. Now this side's going to be a little bit trickier since we don't have a wall to screw them directly into like we did on this side. So for that reason, I'm going to start with the cabinet all the way on my right and screw this directly into the wall. I'll then move left for each cabinet, screwing this one into the one next to it. And same thing for these, same thing for these. However, that's not going to be super strong because I can probably still wiggle this cabinet back and forth. And so normally what we would do is screw a block down into the tile and then screw this cabinet into the block. However, I don't really want to screw into my tile or drill into the concrete. So instead, I'm going to use the exact same method, but instead of screws, I'm going to use a heavy duty construction adhesive. As I screwed all the cabinets to one another, I repeated the same steps as before, using shims underneath to make sure that the top of the cabinets are all perfectly level with one another. Now that we have all the doors and shelves in, the last step is to fully secure this cabinet on the end. So in order to make it super sturdy, I'm gonna put some construction adhesive on a two x four on both the side and the bottom. Then I'm gonna slide it into place down here so that it glues the tile surface to this board here. And that way this cabinet isn't going anywhere. And then with the countertop on top, it's gonna be adding even more weight, so I'm not too worried. So it's the next day and I let this cabinet set up overnight and now it's nice and secure. It's not gonna be going anywhere. So now we can start building the pony wall that's gonna go on the back of these cabinets. That'll go up to about 42 inches so we have a nice bar top. Let's get to it. I'll be building this pony wall the same way you'd build an interior exterior wall of a house with a top and bottom plate and studs in between. 
In addition to marking out where the studs are going to go, I also marked out where those five black metal plates are going to go, and that's going to support the countertop overhang for the bar. I then grabbed my router and set the depth of the bit to the exact height of the black metal plate. This way, they can sit flush on the top plate. I did a quick test on a scrap piece to make sure I had all of my settings dialed in correctly. I then checked to make sure I had the height perfect, which it was on the very first try, which I got pretty lucky there, and then I could start routering out the actual top plate. Now to secure the wall, I'm going to be screwing it directly into the cabinets as well as the wall on the other side. Now I already started by screwing in this stud into this cabinet and as you can see I added a shim here and that was just to make sure that it was perfectly plumb and I also offset it a quarter of an inch and I used a quarter inch sheet of plywood to verify that and that way when I go to put on my finished material later, I have it nice and flush between here and here. Now I'm going to work my way down screwing each of these studs into the cabinet behind them. Let's get to it. I used my laser level here to assist me as I lined it up directly with the center of a stud and then when I went to screw my screws in inside the cabinet I just lined it up with that laser line and that way I knew I'd hit it perfectly centered. Now that our wall is nice and secure we can go ahead and install our supports for the bar top. We'll slide it into our router slot first then I will clamp it into place so it's easily held. I'm also going to check to make sure that it's square before screwing it down. And then we'll add four one and a quarter inch screws. I then pulled out all of these shelves and applied an oil-based polyurethane to protect them. I wasn't too worried about it yellowing since these won't be in direct sunlight. Now before I cover up the pony wall with some finish material, I want to make sure that I run all my electrical first. We have a wire coming out of the wall and into this cabinet on the end over here, and I'm going to run it through the back of the cabinet and put an outlet in roughly in this location in between the two counter heights. I'm then going to run another 12-2 wire from this box through the pony wall over here roughly the same distance from this edge as that outlet is to the wall, and I'll put a second outlet in this location, then we can start to cover up the pony wall. Let's get to it. I again use my laser level here to help me out by marking out the exact height at which I need to drill all these holes and that way I get them in a perfect row. I then painted all of the trim boards. These are all quarter inch sheets of plywood that I'm going to use to cover up the pony wall. I started with an Extreme Bond primer from Sherwin Williams and then I came back with some black paint which is cabinet grade and these are the same exact paints that I used to paint the cabinets. While that was drying I decided to cut out these holes where the old electrical outlets were that I no longer need. I actually had some leftover boards from the demo process that I was able to patch the holes with. It definitely doesn't look perfect, but it looks a lot better than it did before. I then added cabinet bumpers to all of the doors to protect them and made sure to adjust the hinges so that the doors still closed properly. By now, all the paint had dried so I could begin cutting the holes for the electrical outlets. I preferred to use tape and then a sharpie to mark out where I need to cut, and then I used my oscillating tool to make sure I got nice and clean lines. To install all the trim, I'll be using my pin nailer, which shoots 23 gauge nails, which are basically invisible to the eye. I started by installing this piece on the end, and as I mentioned before, I was able to get it perfectly flush by insetting the pony wall a quarter of an inch. I then installed the trim on this side of the pony wall, and it's basically going to act as a backsplash, and this also is where the electrical outlets are going to go in. I put some boards on the top so I could use it as a positive stop to make sure I got it to the right height, and then I went to install my electrical boxes, and it didn't fit. That was unfortunate. I placed these in the wrong location. They're just a little bit too high, so when I went to slide in the box, it hit the 2x4 up here. So I need to lower it just a little bit. I thought about cutting out the 2x4, but that's a ton of work, and I made sure to check my cover plates, and they're actually large enough that if I just lower this just a little bit, it shouldn't be too big of a problem, and it'll still be covered by this cover plate. So let's go ahead and use the oscillating tool to widen it a little bit. It was actually a really easy fix, and then I could go ahead and install my boxes. And if you're wondering what that gap is between the bottom of the backsplash and the cabinets, I left that there so that we can slide the counter right underneath. And I personally like working with these plastic electrical boxes over the metal ones, especially the ones with fins like this. That way you can place the box anywhere you want and the fins just hold it in place. I then installed two GFCI outlets as these are going to be near a water source since the sink is on this side of the bar. 
I could then cover up the other side of the pony wall, and this is actually an 8 foot wide plywood sheet. I couldn't go all the way across, so I had to have a seam on the left side, but you'll see how I cover that up in a minute. Alright, so I just mocked up the battens. I did this for two reasons. One is because I wasn't sure if I wanted to leave them wood or paint them black. I think they do look nice in wood, but I'm going to paint them black in this case. And two is I wanted to make sure that the spacing looked right. Uh, basically, this one has to stay here because this is where the seam is. So I mirrored that over here. So basically, the only three that I'll change are these three. I could take one out and center the two or add a fourth. But I think this spacing looks best, so we're going to leave it like this. Just need to paint them now. Before we start painting, there's actually one more piece that I needed to cut. And it's to cover up this seam here where these two edges come together. I was able to use one of the leftover pieces from the battens earlier. And I cut it into the shape of an L to perfectly cover this gap here. I think it looks really clean. And now we can actually start getting to painting. The laser level came in clutch once again as I used it to install all the battens and make sure they were perfectly plumb. I'll make sure to link it down in the description if you want to buy it on Amazon, as well as all the other products that I use in the video. And that's going to be a wrap on this week's episode of the Basement Bar Renovation. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, please smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And hit subscribe if you want to see next week's video where we finish the bar. And if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them. Also, leave a comment on what type of countertop you think would look best in terms of type of stone and also color. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week.